Hi everybody, in this video I'm going, to walk, I'm going to walk you through the process of getting the wheels to turn together. This is a step that we're going to use not only here, but later on we're going to use it when we build a second car that kind of accompanies the first. Um, the idea is this, I can have my, I, well, first of all, let's notice what I have, okay? If I look over here in my relationships folder, I see all of the different commands that have been done. All the constraints have been done. Every single one is an insert, and it looks fine, but I notice that if I spin the wheels, for instance, every once in a while, oh, you see this happen? See, we don't want that to happen, okay? And the reason that this happens is because the, win the wheels aren't told that they have to spin together, okay? So it's possible to meet all of the constraints here, which is to say it's possible to have everything inserted correctly here, but the wheels don't necessarily have to turn together. You'll notice that one of the wheels is turning clockwise and the other one is counterclockwise here. So the correct the correction is what we're looking for in this video. Okay. In order to make this happen, my suggestion to you is to have the wheel open. Now you can go through over here and you can expand the wheel part or I think my preference is to actually go through and open up the actual wheel folder that I have, the wheel file, individually and work with it because a change that is made in this wheel part is automatically transferred to each assembly that the wheel is included in okay um, and, and so that's just a nice thing it's a good habit to get into for later on okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the wheel and I'm gonna expand the origin menu so I can see the original planes that I used to draw on. okay and you'll notice the way that I created it I have not only an XZ plane but an XY plane that cuts right through the middle okay some of you guys, depending on where you drew your sketch originally for the wheel, okay, will have either one or both of these planes that go through. And what we're going to do is just pick one. Whichever one goes through the middle, you're going to right-click on it and choose visibility. Go back to your home view, you'll notice now I have a plane that cuts through the middle of my wheel, right? The nice reason, the thing we like about this is that I can come back here now and notice that that plane is also showing up in my assembly file because I made it available in the wheel everything that uses the wheel is now going to have it available as well and what I can do is I can use what's called an angle constraint I can go over here I can do my regular constraint menu and I choose the angle variety okay we're going to use the directed angle which is this and you're going to use this option right here for 99.9% .9 of what you do in PLPW and IED okay and we want a zero degree angle between the work planes that you see here through this back wheel and here through the front wheel okay you have to hover over the border to get it okay now when I do that you'll see that these these planes are lined up and the bar is straight across that's a good thing I'm going to apply I'm going to transfer the same thing I'm going to make the wheel here in the front correspond with the rolling of the wheel in the back here now this brings up an important point you'll notice that the bar is down on this side and the bar is up on this side I'm not sure I like that I think I wish I, I'm going to wish later on that they were synchronized with each other. So rather than a zero degree alignment, so that these planes are always aligned with each other angle-wise that direction, I'm going to choose 180, okay? And you're going to notice whenever I say 180, that bar flipped up over here. So that's good. I'm going to click Apply. I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to correspond this one to the back. I'm going to click OK. Now, the beauty of what I just did is I said these two wheels have to roll with the other. And the last step was these two wheels had to roll together. And in between, I said, well, the wheels on either side need to roll together. And so now they are all linked. They all have to turn at the same rate. And you'll never see that bar get all crazy on you again. The only time you're going to have trouble with this is if, you're, if your parts aren't built correctly. If your wheel is the wrong radius, for instance, if the linkage arm is the wrong distance, if it's, if it's too long or too short, or if the holes on your train body aren't in the correct location. Those tend to be the big problems that I see whenever students go to constrain this. They're like, oh wait, my linkage arm doesn't work, or I can't get the wheels to roll properly. It's going to have to do with the dimensions of one of those three parts, the linkage arm, the wheel, or the train body. So that's what you need to go back and look at. Is look at the sketches you used to build them and make sure everything is dimensioned correctly. Hopefully this makes sense, it gets you going. Uh, you can take this work plane off if you want to by going back to the wheel and choosing right clicking and choosing visibility but I'm just going to tell you right now you might as well leave it on because you're going to want it for later steps.